Hello, my name is Alexandra and I'm a PhD research fellow at the Department of Global Development and Planning in the University of Agder, Kristiansand, Norway. In this video presentation, I'm going to introduce my paper that's titled Factors Affecting Student Engagement in Online Collaborative Learning Courses. Let me start by saying a few words about the structure of this presentation. So I will start by defining the concept of student engagement and I will say a few words on why it is actually important to take student engagement into account when we talk about learning experiences. Then I will move on to the research design, then to the results, and I will spend some time on discussion and implications of this study. Finally, I will share some contact information with you in case you want to ask me questions or contact me later on. So what is student engagement? Engagement in academic work implies psychological investment and effort towards acquiring and mastering knowledge and skills. This concept is multidimensional. So it is about behavioral engagement, which is students participating in academic and social activities. It is then emotional engagement, uh, which refers to reactions to teachers, peers, and academic work in general. And finally, it is cognitive engagement, which is about students' investment and willingness to put effort in learning. So students who are engaged are curious, active, involved, and motivated. And students who are lacking engagement are the opposite. Online learning has the potential to increase students' motivation to learn as it provides opportunities that are not available in the traditional classroom setting. Online learning is also more flexible and adaptive, and students have more time for reflection and analysis. It is very important for student engagement in online learning that they have the opportunity to interact with their peers and instructors. On the other hand, it is well known that this form of learning requires a lot of self-discipline from learners. So the motivational factors become crucial in affecting their overall performance. In this study, we had two main research questions. First of all, we wanted to find out what factors were contributing to student engagement. And second of all, what factors were actually impeding student engagement. The context of this study is a one-year course run by a university in Norway. The participants taking the course were based at three universities. The university in Norway, a university in Sri Lanka, and a university in Uganda. The course employed collaborative learning methods, and students from the three universities were assigned in small groups, five to six people. At the time of the data collection, two rounds of the course had been completed. The data were collected during a group interview with the Ugandan participants in May 2016, and it was held at the university in Uganda. 14 people participated in the interview, and they were representing both cohorts of the course. All of the participants were employees at the university in Uganda, and they took the course as a part of their postgraduate education. The format of the interview was very similar to an open discussion, and it lasted about one and a half hours. The interviewer provided several general guiding questions for the students to reflect upon. The study employs an explorative approach, and we use the qualitative content analysis technique to analyze the data. And we used the inductive approach, so we let the categories emerge as we were working with the interview transcripts. Now, moving on to the results, uh, you can see that we have identified four key categories to group the factors promoting and impeding student engagement. Uh, and they are the online course environment, informal online groups established by students, interactions with co-located peers, and online group dynamics. So I'm going to say a few words about each of them in more detail. There have been several issues related to the use of the course platform, which was a learning management system, 
uh, which were impeding student engagement. First of all, lack of experience resulted in students being insecure about using the system in general. Some of the students had problems with language settings and navigation. Also, the quality of connection often would complicate access to the platform and course materials. Some students could not connect or could not load the necessary information. For example, although there were videos uploaded to the environment, students reported that it was not possible for them to load the videos. In addition, uh, the courses required constant access to the platform due to the collaborative nature of learning. As one of the respondents noted, her main challenge was to log into the system every day. Having skipped one day, she failed to participate in an important group activity, for example. The interview reveals that some groups chose to establish informal learning groups, employing other communication channels that were more flexible. For example, WhatsApp was often mentioned. Small groups would often use this as a platform to discuss course materials synchronously. Moreover, being able to discuss informally was very motivating for students and gave them confidence before they would go and post something on the course platform. On the other hand, some of the students reflected that since the established informal groups only included the participants of a certain small group, other peers could not benefit from the discussions and information shared there. In the same way, the instructors and the tutors could not follow and contribute to the informal discussions. When it comes to support from co-located peers, the interview demonstrates that it was crucial. And although the facilitator and the online tutor were pretty much always available, students preferred to ask local peers for help. First of all, they relied on the knowledge and help of the more knowledgeable and experienced peer who had the ability to offer his guidance, especially in terms of the technology and software used in the course. The more experienced peers' help was crucial in this case as students did not have the opportunity to receive direct instruction otherwise. In addition, several interviewees shared their stories about how the peers' support helped them stay on board and not drop out from the course due to a lack of time for participation or complex life circumstances. And it is interesting because the course instructor and online tutor were not even aware of some of these students' challenges. In addition, uh, local peers would often monitor each other's participation and remind each other of important assignments and deadlines. Finally, the last category is about group dynamics. Uh, the interview participants discussed that the collaborative learning mode was motivating for them in general. They were interested to learn about their peers and they thought that the interactions on the platform were mutually respective. So things like that were um, actually very good for their overall engagement. But at the same time, they also discussed that online groups were not always cohesive. For example, sometimes the whole group had to wait for one member to contribute in order to be able to proceed with an assignment. Sometimes students would feel left alone in the environment when they would not get a timely response from their peers. Um, and one of the reasons uh, that the participants used to explain these kinds of things uh, was differences in work and study schedules of the course participants. Now let's move on to the discussion and implications. Having looked at the interview results, we have several conclusions. First of all, it is crucial to provide newcomers with sufficient training on the use of the tools. And that goes in line with much earlier research. We also think that it is important to integrate mobile technologies in the course design. And that would address several issues. First of all, students would be able to communicate synchronously in an easier way. And that would contribute to better coordination in the online environment in general. Also, when it comes to the context of a developing country like Uganda, it is also about more effective and flexible access in particular regions. And 
this is very important when it comes to participating in an online course like that. But then we have an interesting question to ask. Should tutors and instructors be provided access to students' alternative communication platforms? If you have any good references or if you can relate to any research that I could have a look at, I would very much appreciate if you could forward me some references or ideas. As it has been discussed, the interview data show uh, that the help of a local peer was very important for the course participants. So we figured that it could be crucial to assign a local tutor to scaffold the development of a community of practice among the participants. And that is what we are currently doing. We have a local tutor in Uganda uh, who is always available for the participants in case they have any questions. So often he helps the participants to figure out the technology or gives them some hints and directions on how to participate in group assignments and how to find their way in the course in general. Um, also, uh, the interview data suggest that it is crucial for us as educators to promote cohesiveness in collaborative learning groups. And here we have two strategies. Uh, so first of all, it is about online tutoring. Um, so the online tutor is supposed to be in the environment and he or she is supposed to be monitoring students' discussions on a daily basis. Uh, and the online tutor is always ready to address any inquiries that students have. Uh, and on the other hand, recently we have also started to implement collaboration scripts to promote effective interactions and effective knowledge building processes in groups. And there is a couple more papers upcoming related to that as well. I thank you very much for your attention. And as I promised, here is my email address. So if you have any questions or comments, I would be more than happy to discuss them with you. Thank you very much.